Okay, time for the day I've been dreading and looking forward to at the same time for a while now. It's Server Upgrades Part 2. I am going to be rearranging the drives between these two computers and coming up with the best setup to take advantage of what drives I already have. And, well, I gotta move operating systems around. I might try some different operating systems. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I won't be changing the OS on the server. I might go with CentOS on the desktop. I haven't decided yet, because DaVinci Resolve is supposed to work better with CentOS, but we'll see. All right, you're already familiar with the server, but this is the first time the Z820 has really been on camera, so let me briefly go over what I've got going on in here. So this is an HP workstation with two E5-2690 Xeon processors. It has 64 gigabytes of memory. This is the 1080 Ti I bought um, because I really needed that for the footage from this camera. Um, I've got my Blackmagic capture card in there. It doesn't work all that well with the camera. Um, I have some drives in here. They're in a hardware RAID that is just this is just kind of temporary storage um, for when I'm moving files around. This is where all of the operating systems are going to be backed up during the duration of this video, so I don't lose anything. Um, uh, I've got a bunch of cables and drives and stuff running here. I'm actually going to be taking out these two SSDs because those are going to be going in the server now. One of these has the operating system installed on it, but we'll be moving one of the drives from the server into here for the OS. So yeah, I get to play SSD musical chairs here, but that's the server or the, uh, the HP Z820. It's really, it's really crazy modular. Like that's the power supply. This thing's super well designed. It's really awesome. I'm extremely grateful for having been uh, sent this computer. It was just massively game changing for me for editing videos. So I'm I'm incredibly thankful for that. Um, often here you can't really see what that beige face plate is a three terabyte, I think, drive. Um, yeah, that's that's legacy. That's probably going to go away. Maybe end up in the server. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Whew. I got a lot of work ahead of me here. Okay, now over on the server, not a lot's really changed. It's just been running for a couple of months since I built it, or whenever it was, I don't know. Uh, the only real hardware difference that's in here is that I've run a USB cable all the way through the uh, case to the back to a USB 3.0 PCI card. And uh, that's just so I can plug my editing drives into the front. I have started working on the design for the 3D printed dock, but I haven't got that done yet. The mechanism that I'll need for adding in that right angle adapter and holding it in place without permanently attaching it in there is a little more complicated to design than I anticipated, so I've been a bit stuck on that. But um, the first upgrade I'm going to be making to the server is this. Now, this is a power line conditioner, and that is a cautionary tale from this USB card. Now, this is a four port USB 3.0 card, and only two of the ports work now, because after a power failure, the other two ports died. They stopped working. Um, I haven't taken it out and looked at it yet to see if there's anything obviously wrong with it, but that was, um, that, that was kind of a blessing, because all that died was the USB 3.0 card, nothing else, um, and it wasn't even in this server, actually. It was in the XServe probably over a year ago, but... It's just, it's a, it's very concerning. So the first thing I'm really going to be doing here, because I had to take out and use the card, it reminded me. I'm going to be swapping over everything in my server cabinet to be powered through this. This is a 15 amp uh, power line conditioner, so it's going to be more than capable of doing that. But yeah, let's see if there's uh, anything visibly wrong on that card. Yeah, there is zero indication of the failure on this thing. So I have no idea what happened. It's just... A cautionary tale, you know, you should really have expensive equipment on proper surge protection. So, yeah, one of these days I'll get a real nice battery backup too so it can shut down gracefully, but for now, this is a good enough step. Okay, so that's the power line conditioner. I just wanted to mention that one first because it's kind of an invisible upgrade. Now let's talk about what we're going to be doing to the server today. So, the end goal here is that I will be transitioning over to a four drive RAID 0 array in that area. Um, well, no, not RAID 0, it's gonna be a ZFS 1. 
and that will be for live editing eventually, but I still need to get the network connection sorted out, and I can't do that in this video. But we're getting everything else prepared. So um, one thing we're going to be doing is taking out the 400 watt super micro power supply and replacing it with oh, this monstrous 1200 watt power supply. Um, the 16 bays on the front of the chassis will now be usable thanks to this raid card and this raid card and there are also plenty of cables to be routed for this and uh that's pretty much it but the the big thing here is that makes us a pain is i'm going to have to shuffle around operating system installs but yep it's enough of that um let's go ahead and take out the power supply first because that's that's going to be the biggest pain the most number of cables all right i've removed all of the drives so those aren't in the way and i'm going to be Pretty much taking everything out again here, um, except for the motherboard probably, to reroute all the cables. But I wanted to stop and talk about the tape drive for a moment because there were a lot of um, frustrated comments about the tape drive in the three-part video series I did on this. So I want to address some stuff here. So um, first of all, the front metal plate here, because basically they all were about that. Um, you have to leave this on here, okay? the Screws on the side here that look like they will remove that front plate don't because it is wrapped into this piece of metal on the bottom. It's all one solid piece. This whole thing is one piece. So undoing those screws does nothing because this plate is still attached. And I don't want to just cut it off with an angle grinder. That's just, I don't. So no, I'm not doing that. Um, I did not install it backwards. You can see the tabs here are not in the middle of the drive. They're in the middle of the plate. And if you turn the plate around, the drive would stick out the front way too much. So no, it's not that it's installed backwards. This is just what it's meant for. This is meant to block the button and the indicators for the tape drive. Okay, now I'm gonna get everything else out of here. Also, further proof that the metal plate with the tab right here is the front, the drive cover snaps into that plastic here. So yes, that is definitely the front. Okay, there, old power supply extracted. Now I can start wiring in the new one. All right, let's go through and take a look at what exactly we're gonna need out of this. So the power supply has the EPS power connections, which was a problem with trying to use any other power supply. Oh, that thing's still so heavy. Uh, so there's that. Now this has just a, a ton of the uh, modular cables for this. So we're gonna see what all we need to get set up here. Now, oh man, that is, that's, there's so much here, wow. This is, this is a whole other grade of power supply that I'm accustomed to. Oh man, there we go. Okay, coming off of this, we have the ATX power, not a surprise. We have one uh, Molex, that goes to three Molex. That's too bad it's not four, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Have a, that's an EPS because all of the power is on one side there. So, okay, this is, is that another EPS? I believe so. Plus a four socket. Oh, that just, will that reach? Oh, that will, I think that will actually reach. That's going to be nice. What else we got? We got a SATA. Okay, so SATA one's actually kind of useless. Nothing in this is going to use SATA. Oh, the SSDs. So the SSDs are going to use that. Um, that's three SATA, so that's, okay, I'm going to have to um, add one of these for SATA probably. All right, so these don't look quite right. Um, okay, yeah, duh, this was easy to determine. I went back to the uh, super micro power supply. Yes, those are, these are two EPS, so. All right, we have the EPS and the PCIe is the one that's very easily marked and nothing in here is going to be using that until I eventually get a GPU for this. And I might not, there's a possibility that I will be able to emulate a GPU um, with the CPUs, we'll see how that goes. I don't think the NVIDIA hardware encoding will work on that um, because it's just literally not NVIDIA hardware, but 
we'll see. Um, I might be able to try that in this video. I, I'm not going to make any promises, though. That's because that's all a really difficult thing to set up. All right, let's go ahead and get the power supply mounted in there. Oh, it is so heavy. Oh, man. Whew, okay, time to run some cables. And it's really funny, it says literally off and on on the power supply instead of a one and a zero. Okay, that's all the cables run roughly where they're going to go. Now to just get them plugged into what they need to. Now, I'm a bit lazy and really there just wasn't enough space. Um, so I undid some of the screws holding this fan plate on so I can tip it back, which gives me a lot clearer access to the uh, SATA ports or Molex ports on the back planes for the drives. So now I can really actually have a chance of getting these plugged in there. There, and I have one for the tape drive and then one extra. Okay, so now it's time for me to get the RAID cards in here while the SSD holder and the uh, tape driver out and that's a lot more free up there but I did just realize something I am going to have to remove the GPU because I only have two oh man that camera angle is perfect for you to not be able to see them but there's only two PCIe slots left now and if I want the two RAID cards and the USB card which I really badly want the USB card. Um, I'm, I, I gotta get the space free that's under this one. Now, I, I don't have the extension to do my weird routing thing yet, so that'll have to come later. Um, for now, I am just going to remove the GPU. It does do the, the error beeping thing because there's something wrong with the onboard VGA, but it does get past it eventually. Um, if I remember correctly, it does not need human intervention, so... It will work, <laughs> it's just a pain. Okay, I went and scared up some individual SATA cables and got all the SAS cables ready for this. I had to swap the position of the um, Adaptech and the LSI card because the Adaptech card uses the SAS connectors coming straight out the back and they would have just gone into the CPU cooler. So these can now be connected in here. Oh yeah, that's, that's going to be sweet. And I can just start the process of running all the cables now. Oh yeah, one thing really quick. So, uh, I have one of these cables, but it doesn't have this going on. Um, this looks like it ends in a USB header almost. What's the deal with this one? It's got four SATA connectors on the other side, so I'm not really sure what this is. Can someone in the comments tell me what this is? I didn't ask the person who sent me these what this was yet, so I may know before this video goes up. But, uh, yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm glad I was careful with routing these silver ones, because it turns out they're solid core. So, uh, ooh, yeah. But, oh, that's all the back planes connected to SATA now. Whew. All right, now let's, uh, let's run some cables from this for the SSDs. Whew, okay. That's a lot of data. <laughs> okay, let me reiterate the plan of what's going on with the drives in this thing. So this, first of all, is going to be mounted in here. This is a two and a half to five and a quarter bay drive holder. And these are all the drives I'm going to be putting in to both the server and my desktop. So first off, this is a one terabyte drive. This was previously in the Xserve. This will now be going in my desktop. This is a 250 gig drive. This is the boot drive for the server. It will be staying loose. The remainder of these four drives will be going in this dock and will act as a, Ray, or a ZFS one editing pool. And that's where all the data for the videos is going to be while I'm editing. Well, at least once I get a network connection between this and my desktop. In the meantime, this it will still be used for that. It's just, it won't be as quick. Whew, okay, that's, uh, that's still a lot of data, <laughs> but that's taken care of now. The cables are mm, pretty much secure. They're all right. It's it's not the best thing going on in there, but that'll do. I have um, a three and a half or a two point five to three and a half inch drive bay holder that I think would perfectly fit in between this and the uh, SATA uh, tape drive over there. So if I can find that, I'll put this in that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it kind of loose. Maybe jam it under these cables so it doesn't wiggle around quite so much. But yeah, that's good enough for now. It's not like it's a spinning disc, so it doesn't really matter. Speaking of the tape drive, I don't see any reason to not put that back in now, so let's go ahead and do that. Now that pretty much everything's in, at least I'm pretty sure that's everything, I went ahead and did some cable management throughout this. This area's hopeless, because there's just way too high a density of cables there with the Molex power supplies going to the... Uh, back planes, but uh, I was able to make some improvements pretty much everywhere else, so it's looking a lot better now. Um, I don't necessarily think that's more manageable because you got to undo a lot of bundles of cables now, but realistically, I shouldn't have to ever change anything in here until I put a GPU in there, and then it's just going to be moving the uh, SCSI cable there and getting rid of uh, that, which eventually will just have to happen anyway. I'll probably drill out some of the holes in there and run the cable back through that instead. This is just easy for now. So, um, uh, I think that's everything, and I now need to try powering it up and see if it boots. Now, the thing is, is that's going to be slightly complicated by the fact that this is the boot drive for the uh, server, but one of these four drives in here is the boot drive from my desktop that has a full install of KDE on it. So. Hopefully it boots the correct one, and then I can just nuke that whole thing. Again, that's all backed up already, so at least ideally. Um, you know how that goes. But uh, it should be ready, so I can try firing this up, but there's no GPU, so I won't know the video outcome until afterwards. You know what I can do? I can actually... No, because oh, that's right. The, all video cards are 16x, and the 16x goes in the middle, so I would have to move this card to over here, So and then that's... The one that's got the strained SATA cable. It's, uh, 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 this is just, it's a pain. Let's just fire it up, see if it works. I'm going to have to give it network and then see if I can SSH into it. Okay, hopefully this is the first time powering it up. That's not good. Uh, okay. Alright. 
Those were the no video beeps. Okay, something ain't right. It's not getting an IP address and I can't SSH in, so, uh... I'm gonna swap the RAID cards around, yank out the, um, USB card, and then put the GPU back in there and we'll see what it's saying. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, there we go, that's something. Ooh, all right, I went and grabbed a keyboard to use with this. Let's see. I haven't actually tested this keyboard yet. Probably works. I think it's brand new. It's just a nice, heavy-duty USB keyboard for point of sale, so I figured it'd be great for servers. Oh, beeped and recognized it, so good. Adaptec BIO is not installed, that's, uh... Huh, okay. This is the tape drive adapter, and then I think this one will be the LSI card, maybe. Okay, um... Is this just Ubuntu server? Or is this my GUI Ubuntu? Feeling pretty servery. Uh, I think it's trying to mount drives I've removed while I'm testing. Oh goody, it's emergency mode. Alrighty, let's see what the problem is. Waiting, waiting for data interrupt to abort. I have never seen that before. Huh. It only detects the uh, 250 gig SSD, so the others might not even might as well not even be there. Okay, so that's the LSI card. Actually, let's do LSPCI. Oh my gosh! All right, let me see if I can find that. Ah, uh, it's really long. LSI logic. So. Uh, I think it is working because the onboard one is not LSI, uh, so, yep, let me see, so, RAID bus controller, adapt tech, oh, SCSI controller LSI, ooh, hmm, SAS, oh man, uh, I hope it can work for just SATA. Alright, so it's looking like for the Adaptec card, it's only going to do hardware raids, so, I'm going to have to set up the drives I want in there in a RAID and uh, just use the hardware RAID. It's not quite what I was looking for, but that'll work. That's not a problem. So uh, hot swapping those doesn't work. Um, yeah, I still can't get the drives to show up on the LSI card though. Okay, I've done a lot of testing here. Um, some things have been revealed and, uh, well, uh, let me just go over it. So, this is the, um, the Adaptec RAID card, the one that has the two connectors that are going to the backplane now. So, I have one of the five terabyte drives in there and one of the two terabyte drives in there. We can see both of them are up here. This is the two terabyte drive, this is the five terabyte drive. Now, if I go and try to identify disks for, well, I didn't want to rescan, but okay, we're gonna rescan. Um, if I go and try and identify disks, it turns out that the Adaptec is not capable of seeing a drive that is more than two terabytes. Well, not seeing, because obviously it could see it, but it won't let me initialize it. So I'm not going to be able to use the Adaptec card for my uh, bulk storage arrays. But all is not lost. Um, I'll just move the SSD editing array to the Adaptec, which will work out fine because those are only 500 gigs. So that's that's fine. Um, it just means that uh, that's a two um, uh, connector card and uh, one of the rows of four drives on the front of this will only be able to handle two terabyte drives. It's, it's not a big loss. Um, it's not like I have five terabyte drives at the ready to fill all 16 bays anyway, so 
Uh, who knows? Um, now, the other problem is the LSI card that I have these SSDs currently connected to. It doesn't seem to want to work at all. It shows up in Linux, but it doesn't do anything or pass through the drives. I'm not sure what the what's going on there. So the card doesn't have the BIOS option, and apparently it may need that. It was removed before it was sent to me to reduce the boot time, which in retrospect wasn't really needed since the broken IPMI on this thing adds five minutes to the boot anyway. So... Eh. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move the 500 gig drives from the LSI card to the Adaptech and set up a RAID 1 array. Although, actually, I'm going to um, set them up as a JBOD. Not that can, it can do that. Um, and just expose them to the operating system. Just to make sure, let me, give me one final chance to make sure there's nothing important on them. Pretty sure I'm safe, because they were all in a RAID 0, and I don't think I've used three of them since the RAID 0, so should be good, and the one that I did use has been backed up to the, uh, Z820. So, yeah, let me, um, move stuff around. Yep, there we go, that's all the SSDs showing up on the Adaptech card now. Unfortunately, that is uh, all of the uh, SSF um, <coughs> 8087 to 4-way uh, SATA cables I have. So I'm going to have to get at least one more now to properly set this up, uh, at least with the LSI card. I'm going to probably reconnect the uh, second row to the LSI card for now, just so I can troubleshoot that, and then, uh, and I'll do that on this side, and then once I get another cable in, I'll connect it to the top row, so. Alrighty, making some kind of progress, though, um, I can go ahead and initialize, oops, all of these drives, so I haven't looked into how to do this yet, um, so I'm just gonna spacebar them all, boom, initialize, uh, erase all array information. Any array data. Numbers we have to want to continue. Well, there's no array on them, so yes. Hopefully this doesn't wipe the drives. I tried looking this up beforehand and found conflicting information, so we'll see. Alright, um, JBOD. Boom, 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 boom. Enter. Yes. Okay, that should be it. Eggs utility. Are you up? Alright. We'll see how this goes when Ubuntu. Nope. Ubuntu reboots. All right, there we go. We got all the uh, SSDs showing up through the Adaptec card. So, so I can now create a ZFS pool of that. I don't know if I'm gonna do that in this video. I'm starting to get a bit fatigued here and really all of this could be done remotely. So there's no reason I can't just stuff this back in the server case. So, yeah. Oh, the fun never ends. This is the second from the bottom breakout cable and it is too short that's it that's that's all i get this is maximum tautness it's just not going to reach this card at least not these last two slots i can plug into these front two but that's it so yeah that's wonderful and this uh, seems to be a 1.5 foot cable so, which means that i'm gonna have to order a three foot cable to replace that with well not replace that to connect the uh uh SATA card to the back plane because there <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a two foot cable which would be what i really need so yeah i'm gonna have like a whole extra foot of cable in there now yay okay so i tried putting the lsi card in there with uh two of the front SATA ports connected to the uh, back planes of the front SATA drive holders slots whatever and uh didn't work uh so i We'll have to go and do some firmware reconfiguring on this thing, because it should work, it has worked, and it, it doesn't have a hardware fault, I think. It shows up in LSPCI and, you know, all the requisite server or uh, software places. 
So there's nothing wrong with the card, it's just, I think, not configured correctly, and I'll have to go back and troubleshoot that. Uh, Jar Troll had tried his best to uh, reconfigure this to be more useful and easier for me to use, but I think I'm just going to need to undo that and have it be a little bit more stock. It might be a little less convenient for me, but uh, it'll work out fine. But um, aside from that, the Adaptech card's in there and working just fine. The SSDs are all showing up right here. So I'm going to have to go set up a software uh, ZFS pool for that. I'm probably going to look into installing a containerized version of FreeNAS on here and passing through the drives directly to that because that could be kind of fun. So yeah, um, the uh, power supply is in here and obviously working great. I mean, that's kind of like an unsung hero for this kind of thing. So that's, uh, oh yeah, that's perfect. Uh, then it's just, everything's good. Um, yeah, we really didn't do all that much. It was the power supply and the Adaptech card. Moving the SSDs in here, which are all good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go do the uh, one terabyte drive. Let's say this one now on the uh, HP Z820. That's gonna be fun, so. Yep, uh, I gotta copy the data off of that one terabyte drive first though, so. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Um, so, okay. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little quick look at uh, updating the server hardware. I'll probably do a software update in the future. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.